The Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew. We have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew is especially written, was written especially for the Jews and all the expectations. Uh, Mark especially with the Romans, the ever active and powerful Romans. Luke was written for the Greeks, the very reasonable, scientific-minded Greeks. And then John was written for the rest of the world, the cosmos. Uh, and so that's an appeal to the whole world. Matthew was written for especially the Jews, and the Jews, of course, had the Old Testament background. And so when we go to the Gospel of Matthew, we see a lot of uh, prophecy being fulfilled and references to the Old Testament because uh, the ones that were being addressed knew, especially the religious leaders, knew the Old Testament uh, very well. And so we find this in the Gospel of Matthew. But Jesus is being presented as the King of Kings, the Prophet of Prophets, and the Priest of Priests in the whole Gospel of Matthew. And we're in the section where he's being presented as the King of Kings. And as the King of Kings, he brings absolute righteous teachings, and he brings his absolute righteous power to correct the ills and address the ills of humanity. Uh, and so w- this is what we find. So and this is what we find. And he's going to address now the way now the, the Jews way were the Jews attracting were or rather not attracting people not to attracting God. People but that God. starts, in my that mind, uh, a whole question. In my mind, uh, uh, question. That, you know, where uh, are we in terms of our purpose in living? Because the world has lost its purpose for living. And it's always been kind of like that, but especially in our times where we have affluence and monies and opportunities and technology offers us so much that it's so easy to lose our purpose for living. And when people lose their purpose for living, why are we here on earth for? Uh, People live for the here and now. They have no uh, sense of the eternal. No sense of that which will abide forever. It's just a here and now. And in fact, uh, our economics push for uh, throwaway stuff. Anything and everything now is throwaway. Uh, I just had to replace the front discs in my car. As it turns out, it's cheaper to buy brand new ones and install them rather than cut the old ones. It's throwaway stuff. But then everything becomes like that. Babies. Inconvenient. Relationships. Who cares? I can be with two or three or four partners. Uh, let me just live for the here and now. Let me just live for the here and now. Let me just and, sooner or later, and sooner or later, they lose meaning they in lose all of life. And then there's boredom. And then there's boredom. <laughs> there's nothing else to live for. I am bored. I am bored. Wow. Bored. Wow. And meaninglessness. Nihilism. And meaninglessness. Nihilism. Especially when you add to that, especially when you add to uh, that a lot of afflictions, uh, whether it's the pandemic or illnesses or Shanghai, or Ukraine, or what have you, there's this ever-present suffering. And if you don't know what, if any of us don't know, or people don't know what we're here for, and they just live for the here and now, well, the here and now is just full of suffering and boredom. So, again, let me just numb myself, get as much pleasure as I can, Make myself feel good. I remember this, I remember this Emperor's New Groove, that <laughs> Emperor's New Groove uh, that movie, and uh, Pashta, or what's his name, comes home, Pashta, and, name comes and uh, home. the emperor didn't treat him right, and the wife gets all mad, and what'd she say? Ta, I gotta go clean something, and she starts washing dishes all the time. <laughs> but we all do something like that. So that we don't have to face the agony in our own hearts. Let me get busy. 
Let me get accomplished this. Let me finish that. Let me fix that. Let me fix that or whatever so that I don't have to feel the pain in my soul. It's just the here and now. And we all do that. We all do that. We all do that. We all do that. One way or another. Now, as Christians, we know that we're here to please God. We're here to live for Him. We are here to live for the kingdom of God, right? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you, right? We all know that, but... We all know that, but... Why should we decide to live for God? Why is it that so many do not enjoy God? Enjoy God. Why are so many why are so many Christians even so many living living for the world knowing that it's wrong world, knowing that but it's they still wrong. you still do it but they still you still do it but they still you still do it why are many of us why are many not, us, not attracting non-believers to the Lord we might be moral and ethical. We might be moral and ethical. But we're not attracting that many people to the Lord. We might pressure them into the kingdom. <laughs> we might pressure them into the kingdom. Badger them with words and theology. Badger them with words and theology. But we're really not attracting really people not attracting to the Lord. To the Lord. In John 17, in John 17, uh, when Jesus is talking to God the Father, he's Jesus praying. To God the, Father. the last two verses of the prayer the last two verses are of the prayer. You know, so instructive, of course, because he tells us Jesus's priorities and what he's wanting and the way he addresses the Father. And the way he addresses the Father. John 17, verse 25. Oh, righteous Father, although the world has not known you, yet I know have known you. It's something, right? When we can literally say, really, really say, hey, I know the governor of Texas. I really know him personally. I really know him personally. Wow. <laughs> wow. Jesus is saying, ah, Jesus I really saying, know you, God. Yep, really we've been you, together God. from all eternity. Together from all eternity. I really know you. I really know you. <laughs> Let that sink in. Jesus really knows God the Father from Jesus all eternity. Really knows God the Father from all eternity. And these have known that you sent me, these disciples. That you sent me, this This is one time that Jesus was praying kind of over his shoulder so that the disciples would hear the whole prayer. These have come to know that you sent me. In other words, and the way you sent me, that you sent me, is the concrete love of God. Right? That's the demonstration of God's eternal love that you sent me. And they've come to know that. And I have made your name known to them. To them. My whole purpose for coming is to is My to reveal your character to and help them know your character. Them that know your make character. them know that your name to your them. Name. And we'll make it known. I'm going to continue we'll because continue so that the love with which so you have loved me may be in them and I in them. May be in them and I in this love relationship that you and I have, have had from all eternity, Father, from all I eternity. want them to know it. And I I'm going to continue working on that. To help them know you. To help them so that they can you. be in the same love that we're in. When we know that, then we are when moving we that, and want to move to being attractive to being for the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Uh, and so many and so times the, the reason we don't attract people to the, the Lord is because we ourselves don't know God very well. We might know about him, but we don't know him that well. And so we're not attracting that many people and so we're not to the Lord. That many so we're not now I know, no matter how much we can attract, how some people are going to choose no. Some people are going to choose Jesus no. himself was here, right? Jesus and they told him no. Right. They crucified him, in fact. Him, no. But many were but worshiping him, too. But many were worshiping him, You see? Too. And so that's with us. And so that's with us. Are we? Are we? Are we attracting people? Why not? Are we attracting people? Because, you see, people are lost. Because see, people are lost. Desperately trying to find Desperate life to find without, life. God. without God. People are lost in people are desperately lost. trying to find life to find without God. God. Without public, God. God. public schools, politicians, public school, city governments. And many, many of our friends have no idea about what God is really like. And does have no idea of how to relate to him. 
And they need help. And they need help. They need help. And they need help. They need help. And because they've been wounded and hurt and, and, lied, to and, and, and deceived, lied to and deceived, it's hard for them to trust. 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 So when we approach, so people, when we approach, it must be in a, an attractive it way. Must be in a, an attractive that they see something about us that's attractive. That and I'm not talking about <coughs> physical. Okay, physical. dressed as best we can. Yes, yes. Can, yes, uh, yes, yes. Don't get too fluffy. Don't get too fluffy. <laughs> Or whatever, dress as best you or can, whatever, right? But dress as best you can. That's right? not the main point. That's not right? the main point. To be attractive in spirit. To be attractive in, in how we socialize. In how, how we socialize. carry our lives. How we carry our lives. Because we can have all kinds of arguments. Because we can have all kinds right? of arguments. And be very, very unattractive. Be very, very unattractive. Very unattractive. Very unattractive. What we find in Matthew 9, and we, we that's what we're going to be covering. Nine. Matthew 9, verse 9 through 17. Verse 9 through 17. Jesus has a new way of attracting people to God. And it contrasts with dead religious practices. That's what we have. Jesus' new way of attracting people to God contrasts with dead religious practices. Verse 9 through 13, Jesus' Verse new way of attracting 13, people Jesus to God, 17 through, or 14 through 17, dead orthodoxy, dead, dead religious orthodoxy, practices, dead, dead will, religious not practices. Work, Jesus, will not work, will not work, work Jesus' new will way. Not work Jesus's new way. Not we'll look at some application. Let me read the passage. If you want to remember that we talked the last time about Jesus now having authorities and powers, and as King of Kings, that's what we expect. King of Kings, that's what we expect. Because he's being... Because he's being uh, presented as the king of kings. Uh, presented as the king. And so one of the things that we find in the previous and passage that he had the authority to forgive. The authority to forgive. And now what we're going to find is that he has the power to change social structures. To change the way people to relate to God. And change. to one another. Imagine that. To changing Imagine all of the West of the into West. new ways of relating. Into new ways of relating. Wow. That'd be pretty powerful. That'd be pretty well, that's powerful. what we find here well, that's what we find uh, in this passage. Uh, and uh, Jesus is, and tells them, hey, Jesus the old way, the old them, hey, structure, the, the way, way relating to God and attracting people to God, it doesn't work. It doesn't work because you've been applying wrong. It doesn't work because you've been applying so wrong. So I'm, I'm coming up with a new way. So I'm coming up with a new way. And this is the King of Kings speaking and, this is the, King of Kings and the picture speaking. of him. So we start in Matthew 9, verse 9. So we and Jesus went on from there. On from there. He saw a man called Matthew sitting in the tax collector's booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. Then it happened that as Jesus was reclining at the table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and we're dining with Jesus and his disciples. And dining with Jesus and his when the disciples. Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why is your teacher eating with tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said, It is not those who are healthy who need a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire compassion and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Then the disciples of John came to him asking, Why do we and the Pharisees fast? But your disciples do not fast. And Jesus said to them, The attendants of the bridegroom cannot mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them, can they? But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. But no one puts a patch of unshrunk clothes on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment, and a worse tear results. Nor does the people put new wine into old wineskins, otherwise... The wineskins wine burst, the wine burst, and the wine pours out, and the, wine and the wine skins are ruined. And the wine skins are ruined. But they put new wine into fresh wineskins, wine and both are preserved. 
Look at the meaning of those things, the details. So first of all, Jesus has a new way of attracting people to God. Jesus has a new way of attracting people to God. And what does he do? The first example is really an example of then what follows. He uh, goes and sees Matthew, a tax collector. And he says, hey, follow me. And <laughs> this tax collector responds really well. Response really well. What Jesus is expecting of the whole nation. Expecting of the whole nation. As a picture of the way it should happen. Jesus goes to the unattractable, to the unattractive, and attracts them. And attracts them. And it's just a summary statement. We don't know the whole process, but it's just a picture of the whole what it's all about what Jesus is doing in this whole passage. He calls a tax collector. He calls a tax collector. Matthew. Matthew. And Matthew is the Matthew. writer of the Gospel of Matthew. Writer of the and so <laughs> he's talking for first-hand experience. He's talking for first-hand right? experience. He's talking and he knew what it, would, he, it he was to be a tax collector. It was to be a tax collector. Tax collectors were tax collectors hated. Were tax collectors were tax collectors hated. But here's Jesus hated, but accepting the unacceptable. Accepting the unacceptable. And the unacceptable, and the unacceptable respond, positively respond positively to Jesus. The Jews hated, as I said, and mistrusted, distrusted tax collectors. In the Mishnah, there's the written code for, the, for Judaism. And in the Mishnah, we read this. If tax gatherers enter a house, all that is within it, Becomes unclean. Becomes unclean. Ceremonially unclean. Ceremonially unclean. If thieves enter the house, only the part of the house is unclean that was trodden by the feet of the thief. That's how bad the tax collectors were hated. A tax collector enter the house, everything in the house becomes unclean. And if you're in it, you're unclean ceremonially. You're going to have to go bring a... Uh, sacrifice, and a sacrifice and wash yourself and wait some days. Finally, you can become clean. Days. Finally, you can become clean. <laughs> but if thief enters, but if thief not everything in the house gets unclean. Not everything in the Just, house wherever gets were, Just wherever their feet were, that's unclean. That's how bad the that's Jews bad. hated Jews tax collectors. Hated. Tax collectors worked for the Roman government, and of course they abused and uh, extorted people and way, way overcharged for taxes, and they became rich themselves, and the Romans were happy because they didn't have to deal with them, so the Jews just hated, hated, hated tax collectors. And the first thing we find in verse 9 is that Jesus goes to Matthew, the tax collector, and says, hey, follow me. What? A tax collector? A tax collector. And then he makes it worse. And then right? Makes it worse. Because verse 10 says what? Because verse 10 <laughs> verse says 10. what? Then it happened that as Jesus was reclining at table, in the house, behold, many tax collectors. If <laughs> one was bad enough, can you imagine now being in many tax collectors? And that's not all. And sinners. Came and were dining with Jesus and his and his disciples. Sinners were those that just by sheer occupation, whatever occupation there might be, made them unclean, made them ceremonially unclean. I mean, maybe the garbage collectors and throw them in the trash or served uh, served the Roman soldiers or. Had a business and whatever that made them unclean. They were sinners. Never mind all the other riffraff that was bad. No, just by their occupation. No, just by their occupation. They were ceremonially unclean. So here was Jesus. So here was Jesus eating, fellowshipping with tax collectors and sinners. Oh my goodness. That's just. That's just. So appalling. so appalling, just vile, just vile. That's the situation. That's the situation. And Jesus is the one that's causing all Jesus these things. The hey, come on! <laughs> Let's have a pachanga. Come here. Let's get together. Sinners and tax collectors. 
It's a new way. A brand new way. It's a new way. A brand new Because the religious leaders said, no way. You're going to get unclean. And they were so focused on the religious rituals and steps of do's and don'ts that they were totally, totally missing the point of why should you be clean? Why should you be clean? You are to be clean so that you can represent God and attract others to God. Totally missed it. Totally missed it. And we're so focused on do's and don'ts. So focused on do's and don'ts. They lost the whole purpose. They lost the whole purpose. For why have that? And that is something we humans are something else, aren't we? Something we humans are something else, aren't we? We take something that's good and just we take something that's good and just pervert it. So the Pharisees couldn't help themselves. So they go to the disciples. So they go verse 11. When the first. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, they said to his disciples, why is your teacher eating with tax collectors and sinners? I can just imagine. It was worse than that probably. Tax collectors and sinners. I don't know how I'm exaggerating, but they probably came to like, come on guys, you're, they went to his disciples. They went to his disciples. Right. They went to his disciples. Right. And, um, and, um, they were just they appalled were just, that Jesus was appalled. doing this because Jesus was gaining so much uh, popularity and he was doing so many miracles and, he was doing and so people were flocking to him and he was talking about God. And he was Can you imagine the consternation of the consternation all this confusion? Here's this incredible man and yet he's eating with unclean people and his disciples are there? Disciples are so there. they just can't help themselves, so they go they and tell the disciples. So they go and why, 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 why? Why, 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 why? Why, 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 why? Uh, Jesus goes to the defense. Jesus goes to the defense of the disciples. Jesus goes to the disciples. Because probably the disciples were like, I don't know. They too didn't know Jesus very well. They too didn't know Jesus very well. And Jesus probably knew this, so he goes to the defense. He knew this, so he goes to the defense. Doesn't wait for the disciples to answer. Doesn't wait for the disciples. He probably knew they haven't been trained. They really don't know me either. They don't know really who I am. They don't know really who I am. In the depth of who I am. In the depth of certainly the Pharisees did know. Certainly the Pharisees did know. The disciples knew had seen man. Forgiveness and miracle after miracle and all these things. They knew, but they still didn't know the depth. Which also tells us about us. Which also tells us about us. We may know Jesus at some certain level. We may know Jesus at some certain And we may know him rationally. And we may know him rationally. But do we know him experientially? Do we know him experientially? Because when we communicate something, when we communicate something, and if we don't have an inkling of the experiential knowledge of God, then we may sound like noisy symbols. To people. We may sound like noisy symbols. We may sound like noisy very, symbols. very, very unattractive, unattractive very, to people. Very, very unattractive. And that may be why, may be even when why, we do attempt to attract people, we, do attempt we don't attract them. We don't attract them. Because something, because something doesn't, ring true. doesn't ring true. The non-believer may say, I the hear what you're saying. Say, I hear what you're saying. But I see the way you're saying but it I see the way and your saying. lifestyle of do's and don'ts, of do's and don'ts, something is not real here. 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 And we don't attract them. And we don't attract them. Jesus says, um, Jesus says, um, well, well, it's those who are sick. It's those who are sick that need ministry. That need no? ministry. Pharisees. You're so attracted to the do's and don'ts and your religiosity. And who's there? More Pharisees. More scribes. More legalistic people. They're whole. They're healthy. Well, let's assume that they are. Why are you spending your time with the healthy? Is those who are sick. Is those who are sick. Is those who are sick. Who need a physician. Who need a physician? Who need Which, by the way, 
Jesus says, well, let's look a little bit more carefully. Who is sick? And he takes them. He takes them and he quotes from Hosea. From Hosea. Hosea. Verse 13. Verse 13. But go and learn. But go and learn. I see the comedy of this. You know why? I see the comedy of this. Because the Pharisees were the most educated, the one that knew the law. The one that knew the law. And Jesus is telling them to go and learn. Telling them to go learn. <laughs> wow. Wow. Jesus had guts. Jesus had guts. But Jesus also had Jesus knowledge, also had knowledge about them. About them. And he had knowledge of the whole history. He had knowledge of the whole history. Right. He's God. He's God. So go and learn. So go and learn. What this means. What this means. Not just means. your rational just thinking. Your rational thinking. But what this really means. But what this really means. And he quotes from my Hosea 6. And verse 6. And verse 6. I desire compassion and I not sacrifice. And I not sacrifice. For I did not, then he says, go well, learn what Hosea means. Meant. Go well, learn what Hosea means. You see, I didn't come to call the righteous. To call the righteous. You think you're righteous. You think you're righteous. But actually you're sinners. But actually you're sinners. I didn't come to call them. And they might say, wow. Well, yeah. well, I guess that's why he's with sinners. <laughs> but when they go to Hosea, they might learn a few things about themselves. They might learn a few things about themselves. So Hosea, who's going, Hosea. who's going on in Hosea? Well, Hosea. well turn to Hosea, well, 5. Hosea, well, 5. Hosea 5. Hosea 5. And what we have here, and what we have here, and what we have um, here, um, um, which by the way, which by the, the way, uh, Pharisees, when they approached uh, uh, the disciples, uh, they were basically saying, look, why is your most important person allowing himself to be defiled by the scum of the earth? By the scum of the earth. Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? He's defiling himself. He's defiling himself. And as I said, they were really concerned about ceremonial cleanliness. And they had totally missed the purpose of being clean. That was to represent God and therefore attract people to the relationship with God. Um, um, they didn't know that Jesus is the one that brings life, that brings light, life. brings healing light. Brings to people. Healing. They didn't know him like that. To people, they didn't know him like that. People, but when people know him like that, then people know him like that, they're going to see about attracting people to this great healer, the one that can really, really help them. Um, because you see, what's the real problem? What's the real problem? It's not the do's and don'ts. It's not the do's and don'ts. So much as the sin in the heart. So much as the sin in the that heart. That separates people from God. They, separates people. they don't know God. They don't know it's God. the issues of the heart. They don't know so the, the root of sin and plight of so uh, people is separation from God. People is separation from God. Uh, and those that focus on do's and don'ts have no idea of this. They, they don't know about that <laughs> sickness. Because that's really the sickness. Because that's really the people sickness. being separated from God. And it's sin. From God. And it's sin. The separation from God. The separation from God. So Jesus, I've come to help the sick. I've come to help the sick. Because that's really what the because that's really what they need is reconciliation with God. And that's what I've come. He says, but you don't understand this. So you know, he quotes from my Hosea, Hosea six, six. For I delight loyalty rather than sacrifice and in knowledge of God rather than the burnt offerings. But what's happening in Hosea? But what's happening in Hosea? In Hosea 5, in Hosea 5, uh, we find that the people had stopped being loyal to God. They had stopped being loyal to God. Those responsible for justice had dropped the ball. 5-1. Hosea 5-1. Hosea hear this, O priests. Hear this, O priests. Give heed, O house of Israel. Listen, O house of king of the king. 
For the judgment applies to you. For you have been a snare in Mizpah, in a net spread out in Tabar. Those were places of worship, that false places of worship. And they had caused people to, you know, be led astray. And the people fell right into the trap as well. Right? So the religious leaders, the king, they misled the people. And the people followed them like sheep to the slaughter. And that's what was happening. Consequently, neither the leaders nor the people had personal knowledge of the Lord. All this brought terrible and, cor and corruption within the nation. Corruption within the nation. It was crime and violence in both Israel and Judah, everywhere. Um, Hosea 5, verse 8 and following accounts for that, or, or exposes that. Uh, and this, of course, brought a stain um, and broken relationships with God. A stain on God's name. A stain on God's name. The nation had developed ungodly the political foreign relationships to deal with the national problem rather than developing a relationship with God. 5.13, Hosea 5.13. They had turned to other they had turned to other uh, power, so to speak, instead of the power, Lord. So to speak, instead of the Lord. They were playing the harlot. They were playing the harlot. And that's what was happening. And by the way, the Pharisees that Jesus was addressing knew that history. They knew Hosea. They knew Hosea. So when Jesus quotes from Hosea, they knew what Jesus was getting at. They knew. They finally turned to the Lord. But that turning to the Lord was flimsy, flighty, temporary. Weak, their loyalty quick vanished. In Isaiah, uh, Hosea 6, they, they said, oh man, God is after us, we're going to perish. But their turning to him was just flimsy, very, very weak, temporary. So we read in Hosea 6 verse 1, come let us return to the Lord. For he has torn, uh, torn us, but he will heal us. He has wounded us, but he, ha he will bandage us. He will revive us after two days. Wow. That quick. Praise the Lord. He will raise us up on the third day that we may live before him. So let us know. Let us press on to know the Lord. His going forth is as certain as the dawn. And he will come to us like the rain, like the spring rain watering the earth. Don't we sing that? Don't we sing that all out of context? We sing that all out of context. Because... You know what was happening there? You know what the people were saying. You know what the people were saying. Uh, basically, God is like a machine, basically, like a, God is like you know, a machine. You like put a, your dollar in, ching, 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 and here comes what you want. Ching, and here comes in two days, boom, he'll heal us. In two days, boom, he'll heal us. The third day, boom, you know. The, the third day, boom. You know. That's our God, man. Our He's God, like a man. good servant. Hey, I want an extra coat. Hey, Done. Hey, my steak Done. is a little too hey, uncomfortable. Take it back, man. Oh, you're a good servant. Oh, you're That's the way that we're looking at God. Oh, you're That's the way that we're looking at God. How do I know that? The next verse. How do I know that? Verse four. Verse four. What shall I say? What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? For your loyalty is like a morning cloud, and like the dew which goes away early. Away early. You see me like a slot machine, like a vending machine. Like a vending machine. No, no. You don't know me that well. You don't know me that well. The people had knowledge. The people had and ritual, but knowledge and ritual don't cut it. God wants a relationship, a personal relationship, an honest, open relationship with Him. That's what He wants. But they didn't know that. But they didn't know that. Uh, like a vending machine. That's how they like a vending machine. You put your money in and out comes the goods. Put your money in and out comes the goods. Well, they thought. Well, did we say the right words? Did we say the we make the words? right bodily gestures? Right bodily sing the right songs? Right do the right songs, religious things? Then God will certainly and quickly answer our prayers. Quickly answer our prayers. That's what they were saying in verse three, through first three verses. God says. God says. I want you to know. I want you to know what I'm really like. What I'm really like. I want you to know what I'm really like. I want you to know what I'm really like. And that's 
verse 6 that Jesus quotes in Matthew 9, verse 6. For I delight in loyalty rather than sacrifice. Rather than and in knowledge of God, and rather than burnt offerings. Rather than burnt offerings. Rather than burnt offerings. You don't know me very well. You don't know me very well. You don't know me very well. You don't know me. You don't know as much because you don't know. Listen, because you don't know. You don't know the sinfulness of your sin. Sinfulness of your sin. You don't know how ugly your sins are. Oh yeah, uh, I've sinned against the Lord. How bad? I've sinned yeah. against the Lord. How bad? No, you don't know that your sin you don't know deserves sin. Eternity, eternity in hell. Eternity. In hell. That bad? Ah, I'm not bad. that bad. Oh yes. Ah, I'm not bad. that bad. Oh yes. Yep. Ah, I'm not that bad. Oh yes. Yep. But we don't know the terribleness the terrible. of our sinfulness. And we think with some quick gesture, we think with some religious quick gesture, whatever, religious things, will whatever fixed. things will be fixed. No. 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 What no. God desires is loyal, God desires love, is loyal God personal God. knowledge of God personal over knowledge. against God. Over meal and burnt offerings. Meal and burnt offerings. Loyal love towards God means we are going to treat people with the same loyal love, not abuse. Not abuse. And that's what, and that's what then Hosea 6, verse 8 and 9, talks about. And, nine. and again, the Pharisees knew all this. And again, they, the knew this. And again, they knew Hosea. So when Jesus quotes, like, so when Jesus quotes, like, yes. 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 Seemingly, they wanted to return to the Lord. But um, closer inspections show closer inspections that their efforts were superficial. A reformation that is full of presumption and self-sufficiency. We can manipulate God. We can manipulate God. So that's what Jesus is telling the Pharisees. So that's what Jesus is telling the Pharisees. Right? He's bringing in a new way of attracting He's people in a new way of attracting to the Lord. He's, uh, there's an acceptance of the non-believers of being with them, not judging them. And in having fellowship with them, and he's accepting like, with them and he's accepting oh, like, this is a new way. God actually loves us. Yeah, he loves God you. Now you need to repent. You need to address your sin. But it's not this religiosity. And look at the tax collectors and, look at the and tax sinners. Collectors. They want to be with Jesus. Want to be with Jesus. Want to be with wow. Jesus. Wow. 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 And now... And the John's disciples, John the Baptist's John's disciples, disciples, John the Baptist's disciples, uh, come to Jesus, and apparently, uh, come to Jesus, and they were connecting with the Pharisees. They were connecting, with and the Pharisees, probably the Pharisees were beginning to influence John's disciples. Influence John's disciples, because that's what we hear, and, and the reason this is brought up here is because it's going to bring the contrast between the old religious practices and the new way that Jesus is doing. Things attract. How how does the old uh, uh, old system work in terms of attracting people? Oh, rules and regulations, cleanliness, ceremonial cleanliness. Uh, uh, and just instead of really having compassion, loving people. And apparently, John the Baptist disciples were being you know influenced by the Pharisees. So now, in Matthew nine, they come to Jesus. They come to Jesus. Verse fourteen. Then the disciples of John came to him asking, Why do we and the Pharisees fast? But your disciples do not fast. Wow. Um, and those he set up, this highlights, or going to highlight the contrast between Jesus' way of attracting people to the Lord and the Pharisees' way of attracting they were not attracting. They were not attracting. Right. So John's disciples are being influenced. So John's disciples are being influenced. Um, um, so what does Jesus do? So what does Jesus do? Jesus says, well, let's use an analogy. Let's use an analogy. In a wedding. The bridegroom. The bridegroom. 
When the bridegroom is there, when the bridegroom is there, should you have should you have fasting and long faces like in a funeral? Faces like in a funeral? I mean, what is that going to do to the bridegroom I mean, and the whole wedding celebration? No. When the bridegroom is there, it's like, yeah, marriage, yeah. And there's excitement and there's a party and joy and so forth. Joy and so forth. Joy and so forth. Without saying that Jesus is saying, I'm the ultimate bridegroom. I am the ultimate. I am the ultimate. Source of joy. Source of joy. Source of life. Source of life. Should they be fasting when Should I'm around? When I'm around? Didn't say that, but they're getting the point. They're getting the point. Right? Verse 15. Right? Verse 15. Then Jesus said to them, The attendants of the bridegroom cannot mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them, can they? Is with them, can they? I always get a kick too when God asks a question. He's not asking for information. He's pointing out something that we need to look at. It's like, how reasonable is that when the bridegroom is there? Fasting? Ah, uh, sorry, I can't eat cake. I'm fasting today. Well, then get out of here. <laughs> no! You know, when the bread, you bring on the cake and the wine and the meat and fajitas and everything else. Meat and fajitas and everything else. King, mourn. Mourn. Be sad. Be sad. And maybe, maybe, John's disciples were mourning because John had been killed. I don't know, because he was in prison. Mourning. There's something greater than John the Baptist here. There's something greater than John the Baptist here. I'm the bridegroom. I'm the bridegroom. Can't mourn while the bridegroom is there, is it? Mourn while the bridegroom is there, is it? But here it indicates. But here it indicates. But they will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. Then they will. But in the meantime, I'm here. But in the meantime, I'm here. And so then he's basically saying, "Look, I've got a brand new way of attracting people to God. This old religious practices, old orthodoxy, orthodoxy just." The right way to do religious right things. Way to do th right? religious things. And practice it. This is what you got to do to practice. This is what you got to do to practice. And sometimes that's very beneficial. It's good. That's very beneficial. But when good. that becomes but the main thing and not main compassion and love for people, love for people. Religiosity. religiosity. And now Jesus is going to say, my new Jesus way is, is incompatible with the old way, or the old way is incompatible with my way. And that's what he's going to get at. And that's what he's going to get at. Remember, he's the king of kings. And so he says now in verse 16, But no one puts a patch of unshrunk clothes on the old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, and a worse tear will result. A worse tear will result. A little bit of knowledge of fabrics, right? Fabrics, especially back then. They didn't have all the nylon and synthetic and all this. No, probably cotton or something that shrunk when you washed it. Shrunk when you washed it. So if it was unshrunk, so if brand new, and you put it in an old garment that already was shrunk, the new one's going to tear away. You know, it's going to tear away. And now you would have lost the brand new piece of cloth and the old one. So the two are not compatible. The old system of the Pharisees and mine, not compatible. You got to match them up. Match them up. Now he says in verse 17, another now illustration. 17, another illustration. Nor do people put new wine in old wineskins. Otherwise the wineskins burst. Otherwise the wineskins burst. And the new wine is poured out. And the wineskins are torn. Same thing. Right? Old wineskins become uh, hardened. You put new wine in there. The wine ferments. It expands. Breaks the whole thing. The wine is lost. And the wineskin. You don't do that. You don't do that. But they put new wine into fresh. Fresh. A new system. A new system. Into fresh wineskins. Into fresh. And both are preserved. Are preserved. Jesus, I am the one that causes all joy and happiness. 
and you try to fit my ways with the old ways, not going to work. Not going to work. Not going to work. You must start with new. You must start with new. Or both will be destroyed. Or both will be destroyed. So, what that means to us? What that means to us? To us. Two thousand years later. Well, first of all, I think the first thing is we need to say, I need to develop my relationship with God. I need to develop my relationship with Jesus. Right? Because if I don't know him that well, and I'm stuck on do's and don'ts, I'm going to end up like the Pharisees. I'm going to end up like the Pharisees. I need to develop my relationship with Christ. Develop my relationship with Christ. Dine with him. Dine with him. Maybe sometimes just take your sandwich and go up under a tree and talk to the Lord, dining with him. Lord, this food. Hmm. Cup of coffee, you and him. Cup of coffee, you and him. Hmm. Alone with him. Time alone with him. How about taking a walk with him? How about taking a walk with him? I'm going to walk the park. Talk to Jesus the whole time. Talk to Jesus How about taking a drive? I don't know for you. For me, driving is therapeutic. People say, I hate driving. I hate and to each his own. <laughs> for me, it's therapeutic, especially when I drive at night. Man, that's so awesome for me. It's therapeutic. Well, how about taking a drive with Jesus? Well, how about taking a drive with Jesus? You know what? Uh, I'm going to go to the island just to drive and talk to Jesus. Hmm. Uh, a quiet, quiet time with him and learn about him. Enjoy him. Enjoy him. Enjoy him? How do you enjoy Jesus? Huh. Enjoy Jesus. Huh. Fresh new ways to think. Fresh new ways. About Jesus. Enjoying About Jesus. Jesus. Enjoying Jesus. All I know, Jesus is going to whack me when I do something wrong. Whack me when I do something wrong. picture we have of him. Enjoy. Lord, help me enjoy you. Lord, help me enjoy Help me what it means to have a good time with you, Lord. Have a good time. That's a new way to think about Jesus. relationship with Jesus, right? So... First application, develop a relationship with, Je- with Christ, with Jesus. Because when we get to know him better, then we're going to be more up to attracting people to him. Right? We're going to be attracting people to Jesus. We're going to be attracting people to Jesus. So that's the first application. Um, here's the second one. Maybe it's time we break away from certain family practices. <laughs> That keep us, you and me, from following the Lord. You and me from following the Lord. Examine our own current social practices that might need revising, if not total replacement. You know, some of us have been doing things the same way, same way, same way. We think it's right, and it's not. So maybe examining, Lord, how am I socializing in such a way that keeps me from really attracting people to you? Maybe I need to change. Maybe we're just sticking with those that make us feel good. We feel they're going to bless us, so I'm going to hang around just with them. Maybe I'm just sticking around with convenient or fun relationships. I'm just going to keep my schedule. I'm just going to keep my schedule. Because my schedule is what's most important. Going to make me. But you know, before we do some of that, Maybe it's also necessary, and it is necessary, to say, am I examining where people are at? Where people are hurting? Instead of focusing on me, 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 and say, what are they going through? And asking to really know them. The Pharisees didn't care about the tax collectors and sinners. They're just not behaving right. They're just not behaving right. Well, what are they going through? Right. What, are they going through? Right. what are they going through? What are they going through in their life? What are they going through in their life? Maybe they have some disease that's they have some disease incurable, that's hopeless. Incurable. Maybe they're just going through a divorce. Maybe they're just going through a divorce. Maybe they just realized they were sexually abused by they were sexually abused a relative when they were ten years old and they had forgotten about it. Now it comes out and they're want to kill themselves. 
Maybe they didn't realize that aborting a baby was really, really awful. And maybe they just came to their senses. We don't know. But, you know, that's what we have to kind of examine. How, how are we socializing? And re-examine, maybe change some things of how we do things. Are we attracting people to the Lord? And really, that's my last application. That's my last application. The nation of Israel was... To reflect the character of God and thus inviting others into a relationship with God. That's what they were supposed to be doing. But when their personal knowledge of God was all but gone, then they misrepresented him. Focus on the rules and religious practices. We as Christians are responsible to reflect the character of God. And bring people to the Lord. And our motivation to be... God's loyal is to be God's loyal love. Do I know God's loyal life for me? Because if I don't know God's loyal love for me, I'm not going to be motivated with the best of motivations. But when I do, when I do, it's like, hey, come know my God, man. He's so awesome. He's full of love. I want you to know him. It's not just pressure to. It's not just pressure to. I'm going to evangelize ten people today. I'm going to evangelize ten people today. I'm going to evangelize ten okay. people today. Okay. Uh, uh, we need to bring the character of God to people and thus attract them. God to people and thus attract them. It needs to be the loyal love of God. It needs to be the loyal love when we of God. God. When we know God's loyal love, then we are going to be God's gracious. Love, we are going to be gracious and inviting. Gracious and inviting. Attractive. There's a difference between somebody's pointed There's out. A difference between somebody's pointed between, out. between between having people respect having people us respect versus, versus attracting people. Attracting people. We can demand respect. We can demand respect. We can accomplish things where people go, "Wow, mm, man, I'm not going to even wow. close to that person man, because, because versus being versus inviting, being in gracious." Friendly. Friendly. Why? Because you want to be popular? No, because God is gracious to you. Because God is gentle and loving. And none of that to say, be gracious and loving and inviting to others. To people around us. And we must not be narrow-minded and rejecting. That doesn't mean that we accept sin. That doesn't mean that we endorse no matter what. That doesn't mean that. No matter what. But be attractive. But be attractive. Tax collectors and sinners. Tax collectors and were reclining with Jesus at table. Reclining with Jesus. And the religious practice practitioners did not like it. And so, again, Jesus' new way into our lives. Um, this new way of attracting people to God is contrasted to just being religious or Christians uptight. Gotta have everything just so. So let my life be the proof.